Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. There's a brand new flight stick on the market that's changing things up in more ways than just one, the Furin FRS. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Furin Arcade sent me this prototype FRS for a fair and honest review, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Taking a look inside the first box of two boxes in total, and I can immediately see the beautiful FRS. Now I've been told that this is the default artwork for the FRS and I am really happy with it. Yes, you can change it out, but for me, this looks incredible. If you're a fan of the Sega Astro City, you'll probably be a fan of this artwork. And you can see here that I went with the WASD layout. My immediate impressions of this stick is that it's visually striking and it does have a bit of heft to it. It's heavier than I thought it would be and we'll get to weighing it in just a second. On the front of the case, there's a very interesting slot and in that slot, there's a switch. This switch enables or disables a button and we'll go over that in just a minute. We can also see that there are five different layers in total. We've got the plexiglass layer, the top panel layer, the body, the base layer, and also the foam layer. On the right side of of the stick there aren't any buttons there or anything on the back of the stick we've got one usb port and i immediately don't like how exposed this is although this is just a prototype stick my initial thoughts are that this is going to be pretty darn easy to break off however i did talk to the owner of here in arcades and this is going to be addressed now moving on to the left hand side of the stick and there's nothing on this side either not that there needs to be so the left and the right hand side of this stick have nothing on them maybe a place for artwork if you want on the bottom of this stick, we have a foam pad that covers the entire stick. It is thick and it doesn't feel cheap. In my opinion, this provides a really good amount of grip as well as cushion if you're using it on your lap. And something worth pointing out here, even though there are five different layers on this stick, they line up perfectly. Everything is flush, there are no ridges. It feels very well put together. Here's a bit better of a shot to show you how flush everything looks. Taking a closer look at the buttons or the keys on this, we can see the FRS is using Cherry MX switches. They are not messing around here. They went with quality right out of the gate. For those curious about the keycaps on this, there are ridges on them, but they're on the inside, not on the outside. The outside isn't necessarily smooth though. I'd compare it to an older Hori Hayabusa button. There's a bit of a texture, but not necessarily anything that I find uncomfortable or annoying. I actually kind of like it. The top row of buttons on the FRS are reserved for your touchpad, your L3, R3, home, start, and select. Now for some fun stuff. Let's take apart this stick and see how everything works. This stick is held together by some very long screws that go through all of the different layers. There are six screws all together that hold on the top plexi and artwork. So modding this to change your artwork does seem pretty simple and straightforward. Just unscrew those six screws, take off the plexi, separate the artwork, put your new artwork in and you're off to the races. And very interestingly here, I noticed a hidden button underneath the plexi. The next thing for me to do is to take off this top panel. I immediately started with four screws that I was not supposed to take off. Fortunately, they were on there pretty darn good, so I didn't have to worry about accidentally taking them off at all. I just decided to work on the other screws. The screws around the perimeter of the top panel came off extremely easy. And a nice little touch here, I noticed these screws have a little bit of Loctite on them, which will prevent them from getting loose on you. It's also pretty easy to see that this left panel is wired up with one clip, so taking this apart is simple and straightforward. Forward. From my understanding, you can order these PCBs with hot swaps or soldered in. It's entirely your choice. As for the left-hand side of the panel, it comes apart pretty much the exact same way. You take out the screws, you unplug the PCBs, and that's about it. Now these wires are a little bit tight, so you have to be careful that you don't accidentally bend the pins, like I did. I might not have been as gentle as I should have been, and I did bend one of the pins at the top. Fortunately, I didn't break it off or anything like that. It's still 100% usable. And just to remind you though, this is a prototype. Now I talked to the owner of Furin Arcades and I asked them if they'd include some slightly longer wires that would allow you to take off these panels, twist them around without really risk of damaging those pins. They are very tight in there. They're wired very well. We can see that this stick is powered by a Brook UFB and that PCB is tucked nicely in the corner. The FRS is very nice and tidy on the inside. Everything seems fairly easy to replace, especially this USB port if you accidentally damage it. Now that we've taken a look at box one and taken apart the fight stick, let's take a look to see what's in box two. 
Immediately I see some PCBs in here and some top panels. This top panel for the right hand side of the stick has a similar layout but we can see that jump button. And here's a quick side by side of the two panels. The other panel in the box is for the left hand side at the top and we can see we've got a hitbox style of layout instead of the mixbox style of layout. So here are the two top panels side by side and you can see that they are considerably different. And in the bottom of the box we've got another plexiglass top panel with some different artwork. And this looks to accommodate this new top panel altogether. It's also worth noting here that these top panels have different Cherry MX switches. We've got Speed Silvers here instead of the Reds. If you haven't guessed this already, one of the big features, if not the biggest feature about the FRS is that it's fully modular. You can swap out the top panels as you please. Now putting this secondary top panel on, I noticed that the connectors are the exact same. So just be careful when you're putting this thing back together that you put the right connector on the right section of the PCB. On a side note here, in my opinion, this is a perfect example of why a little bit of extra wire would go a long way in making this easier to put together. I had to kind of fumble around with this just a little bit to get everything plugged in without damaging it. And I also found it pretty easy to plug this in upside down if you're not careful. You really have to pay attention when putting this back together. And speaking of putting it back together, when I was screwing in the top panel, I accidentally put some of the screws in the wrong places. I didn't pay attention to where those screws were initially and it's really easy to stick them in the wrong holes and screw them in. My advice here is to either take a picture of where all the screws go before you take them out or just use the top plexi to help align the screws and make sure you're not putting something where it shouldn't go. It's also worth pointing out here it took quite a bit of time for me to line up the top panel perfectly. It's very easy to place this top panel on and screw it in and to not have a line up. You can see here the bottom of the top panel is hanging off the edge just by a little bit. So I did have to take my time here and make sure everything was lined up just right and then screw it in slowly. To me this really isn't a deal breaker but if you like things lining up absolutely perfectly this might take you longer than you think. And once I had everything pretty much aligned I put on the artwork in plexi and screwed that in. Earlier on in this video I mentioned that the stick felt a little heavier than I thought it would and taking a look at the weight here it's weighing 1625 grams. And for comparison the Snackbox Micro is coming in at a whopping 427 grams. And here's the Paradise Arcade M-Press, which comes in at 1790. If you are curious about measurements, the width of this is about 12 and a half inches. The length of this is just under eight. And the height of this is just under one and a half inches, and that's including the foam. For a size comparison, here's the FRS beside the Snackbox Micro and the M-Press. I would say the surface area is between both of those sticks and the FRS is just a little bit thicker. And here's both sets of layouts side by side that Pure and Arcade sent me. Let me know which one you like better in the comments below. Let me know which artwork you like better in the comments below. Now let's check out this stick in action. Since my version here is using a Brook UFB, to connect it to the switch I have to press and hold down one kick while I plug it in. And then it should connect A-OK. -okay. The Brook UFB is an amazing PCB compatible with a ton of different systems. And I did notice one issue right away. I couldn't press that jump button to move up. And that was because I forgot to change that switch on the very bottom. So if you are changing up your top panel, you may or may not have to activate this switch. I just used the included Allen wrench and switched that over and it seemed to work just fine. In terms of overall responsiveness, this is using a Brook UFB, so I was very pleased with everything. The buttons feel good, everything worked as anticipated. I had no issues with anything whatsoever. Although this case doesn't have LEDs, I did notice the blue LED from the Brook board glowing through the side. So if you wanted to add some LED strips in here, I think that wouldn't be an issue at all. So let's get into what I liked, what I didn't like, and whether or not I'd recommend the Furin FRS. And we'll start out here with what I liked. The first and arguably most important thing I like about this FRS is how easy it is to change out those top panels. They are almost plug and play. Just a few screws before you get to the plug and play part. Part. It's simple and it's straightforward. And those plug and play panels bring me to the second point I like about this stick. There are a ton of different options available. I love that they use Cherry MX switches on this and for the size of it, I think it's actually pretty portable. So if you are taking this to a friend's house or to a tournament, this probably wouldn't be too difficult to transport. Now aside from the exposed USB port on the back of this, which I don't like, the rest of it feels very well built. This thing feels like it's built like a tank. It doesn't flex as I squeeze it. I'll try to get the light on it there. 
and I'm squeezing it here and you can see that light really isn't warping that much. There's not much give at all here. It's sturdy. I like the pad on the bottom. It feels quality. It doesn't feel cheap either. And flipping over to the buttons on the top here, some people might not like these smaller buttons, but I do. And they aren't the easiest to press in. And if you're playing fighting games, you don't want to accidentally press any of these buttons at all. So that's a good thing. If you're using these for other games, yeah, it might get a little bit annoying because they aren't full size buttons. And now moving into things I don't like about this stick. The first thing I noticed right away was how exposed this USB port was. I have spoken to the owner of Furin Arcade and apparently this is being addressed. So I don't know if it's overly fair to be critical about this, but at the same time, if these remain as is, I am not a big fan of this. The second thing I didn't like about this was how long it took me to align the top panels. If you are a perfectionist and want things absolutely perfect, it will take a bit of time and you're gonna be having to adjust it left, right, and center. It's easy to adjust, it's simple, but at the same time, it's time consuming to get it absolutely perfectly. And speaking about the top panel, the third thing here is kind of a combination thing. It all has to deal with the pins. I am not a big fan of these pins. They bend very easy and easier so given how short the cable is to connect them. If you yank on that cable a little bit too hard, you can very easily bend these pins like I did. On top of that, you can very easily put the connector on upside down and this probably won't work as anticipated. I personally think an easy fix for all of that would just to include a slightly longer cable and maybe put some marker on the top of the connector so you know which way is up, like other joystick manufacturers do. Or possibly just use a different connector altogether. And the last thing I don't like about this, it's not really a problem of this stick, but I wouldn't mind seeing an option here to Maybe have a little rubber stopper just to plug this hole to prevent gunk from getting in it. So given my pros and cons about the FRS, let's take a look at the price of the FRS to determine whether or not it's worth it. To do this, I'm over on Furin Arcade's official website. I'll scroll down a little bit here and we can see the FRS starts at 245. I think that's pounds, right? Pounds. Uh, the kits for it, we've got face plates here for 65 pounds for the left hand side. 85 for the right hand side. Art prints are 15 pounds. So the FRS starts at 245 pounds. Let's go through the configurator and see where we end up. For case, my only option is white. Uh, for PCB, there's a ton of different options here. Brook Zero, Brook PS4, Brook UFB, uh, Brook UFB plus PS5 compatibility, or the no PCB version. If you've already got a PCB to start with, the FRS is reduced in price down to 225 pounds to start. But if you need a PCB with this or just want a PCB pre-configured with this, the Brook Zero won't add any cost. The Brook PS4 brings it up a little bit. The Brook UFB brings it up even more. And the Brook UFB plus PS5 compatibility brings up the price up to 355 bucks. I had the Brook UFB in mind, so we'll go with that option. Now let's choose a layout. So for the left-hand side, there are a bunch of different options here and none of them really seem to be increasing the price, which is a big thumbs up. So there's mix box style, hit box style, and pretty much everything in between. Uh, for mechanical switch types, we've got a bunch of Cherry MX switches to choose from, silver, red, black, blue, or brown. And if you don't know what these are, I would recommend doing some reading on them before you order them and none of them are increasing the price, which also gets a big thumbs up. Now moving on to the layout on the right side, we've got eight different options here and none of them seem to be changing the price. And again, a whole bunch of different layouts. And looking at the switches, again, we have our options of silver, red, black, blue, or brown, or even assorted if you like to get crazy. The last option here is a choice between fixed switches or hot swaps, so whether or not they're soldered in or not. It's 15 bucks for hot swaps and no cost to have fixed switches. The switches in my fight stick are soldered in, they're fixed. So that doesn't add anything to the cost and we're looking at a final price of 305 pounds. So at the time of filming, 305 pounds converts to about 367 US dollars. So at approximately 367 US dollars, would I recommend the Furin FRS? And the answer here is yes and no. No, if you're looking for something inexpensive, the Furin FRS will set you back a few bucks. And no, if you have no plans on ever changing your layout, you can probably choose something for relatively cheaper and not worry about it. However, if you're not dead set on one specific layout, if you're debating between two or three or four different layouts, or you like experimenting, or you're debating on a few different sticks, 
Well, this is one stick to kind of rule them all in that regard. There are a bunch of different configurations here. It will save you quite a bit in the long run. You don't have to buy two, three, four different sticks. You can just buy one and then buy the panels to switch out to suit your own needs. On top of that, if you've got your own PCB ready to go, that will reduce the cost of the FRS by a considerable margin. And yes, the FRS is pricey on its own still, even without a PCB, but that price isn't just because of the portability of this thing or the modularity of this thing. Uh, it's also because it's built very well. It's built solidly, it doesn't feel cheap. The buttons are great, the switches are great, the overall build quality is good, and it doesn't really flex. This thing is solid. And even further to that, as far as I know, Furin Arcades plans on adding even more options to this. More top panels like Sanwa buttons if you want those. Uh, even a joystick option at some point in the future. Some point probably in the near future. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point. Tall stuff and no fluff. Huge shoutouts to Furin Arcades for providing this FRS for a fair and honest review. Let me know your thoughts about the FRS in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.